Greetings. Welcome to the 2015 Wildlife Hazards Management and Strike Reporting Update, part of the FAA Airports video series. At the end of this video, I hope you have a better understanding of how the FAA is reducing wildlife hazards through reporting. Aircraft and wildlife often share the same airspace and ground space. Through the FAA's Wildlife Hazards Management Program, the agency has worked to address wildlife strikes at airports and show the many benefits of strike reporting. This is the foundation for understanding wildlife hazards on a national level and at individual airports to increase safety. Strike data allows airframe and engine manufacturers to design aircraft parts that can better withstand wildlife impacts. Airports use strike data to identify and eliminate habitats that attract wildlife seeking food, water, or shelter. Airport operators and biologists reduce specific wildlife hazards based on information from strikes. FAA biologists work to address wildlife hazards in many ways through regulatory guidance, data collection, research, partnerships, and outreach. The FAA has been collecting strike data for 60 years, but the systematic method goes back to 1990 with the creation of the FAA's National Wildlife Strike Database. Since that time, we've documented more than 150,000 strikes to form the database managed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture for the FAA. It provides information about each strike to identify what type of aircraft and species were involved, the time of day and phase of flight when the strike occurred, where the strike occurred, and whether it occurred in or out of the airport's environment. The data also helps us understand how the strike occurred by connecting possible attractants on or near the airport and the season during which it occurred. So who can report wildlife strikes? Anyone who has either witnessed an incident or found evidence of a strike. More than 1,800 airports in the United States have reported strikes since 1990. To ensure the FAA receives as many reports as possible, we've conducted outreach efforts to educate the aviation industry about the value in reporting. The simplest way to report a strike is online at wildlife.faa.gov or by using the smartphone app. You can also enter reports by scanning the QR code at the bottom of our annual strike awareness posters mailed throughout the industry. We also publish an annual FAA USDA strike report and send our experts to conferences, workshops, and air shows. We've learned from the National Wildlife Strike Database that the better we understand these risks, the better we can reduce the threat and improve safety. The FAA Airports Division has several partnerships throughout the aviation industry. One of those partnerships is with the Smithsonian's Institution's Feather Identification Laboratory. We provide funding that allows them to provide a service of identifying bird remains that are involved in strikes with aircraft. They can provide this service free of charge to any aircraft that is U.S. registered or with the airports within the United States. Now we can take that information and it allows us to have a better understanding of the national trends with wildlife strikes and to better understand also the hazard ranking of certain species. That information becomes the foundation then of our advisory circulars and our regulations within Part 139.337. The regulatory guidance in 14 CFR Part 139.337 details an airport's obligation of when and how to conduct a wildlife hazard assessment and to create a wildlife hazard management plan. Equally important is Advisory Circular 150-5200-32B, Reporting Wildlife Aircraft Strikes, which clarifies strike reporting procedures for the aviation industry. These two documents provide the blueprint for reducing damaging strikes within the airport environment. Additional guidance can be found on the FAA website. The FAA also partners with the Bird Strike Committee USA, interacting with more than 20 representatives from the industry improving communication, and sharing FAA guidance and research efforts. What have we learned from strike reporting? We know that birds are involved in 97% of the reported strikes. Terrestrial mammals, such as deer and coyotes, comprise about 2%, and the remainder consists of bats and reptiles. While land mammal strikes are much less frequent than bird strikes, they are far more likely to cause damage. We also know that over half of all bird strikes occur between July and October, and that a third of deer strikes occur in October and November. We now know that mammals are more likely to be struck at night, whereas birds are struck more often during the day. 
Both birds and mammals are more likely to be struck during quieter approaches and landings compared to louder takeoffs and descents. Data shows that catastrophic events are most likely to occur during takeoffs. There are more people and more aircraft flying than ever before, and due to conservation efforts, many species of birds and mammals have increasing populations for the first time in decades. From 1990 to 2014, there have been over 500 species of birds, 40 species of land mammals, and almost 20 species of bats and 15 species of reptiles involved in civil U.S. aircraft strikes. The groups of birds with the most damaging strikes are waterfowl, gulls, raptors, and flocking birds such as starlings and blackbirds. Deer species and coyotes are the land mammals with the most damaging strikes. As expected, strike data shows that the larger and heavier an animal, the more likely it will cause damage. Similarly, smaller sized birds that flock together, such as European starlings and blackbirds, pose as great a threat to aircraft as larger individual birds. Damaging strikes below 500 feet within the airport environment have dropped during the last decade, even though the number of reported strikes has steadily climbed. We believe that the increase in wildlife programs is leading to this reduction of hazards and improved safety. And now more than ever, airports are taking an active role to better understand their wildlife hazards. So where does this leave us? The National Wildlife Strike Database shows that we have to continue targeting research efforts to improve our understanding of specific hazardous species and to improve mitigation techniques for those species. We will also continue researching detection and monitoring technologies and modifying habitats to make them less attractive to certain species on and around airports. Strike data helps us evaluate management strategies and how wildlife programs are able to reduce or eliminate damaging strikes. We've come a long way in understanding the risks that certain wildlife pose to aircraft, but we will continue making improvements where they can be made. Even though aircraft and wildlife share the same airspace from wheels up to wheels down, we now know enough to change what can be a conflicting existence to one of safer coexistence.